Hello, in this video we're going to be adding to our previous RTS player pawn by adding edge scrolling and terrain mapping. To get started with edge scrolling, if you haven't already uh, set up the player pawn that I covered in my last video, the link will, is up at the top right. We'll begin with just creating a protected function called, or whatever you like, but I'm going to call it edge scroll. And I'm going to put the edge scroll in the tick here, uh, wherever, I'll put it next to this camera bounds here. To do the edge scroll, we're going to need to first get our mouse position and then calculate when it's at the edge of the screen. We're going to use library, widget layout library. Uh, you'll need to have the widget layout library.h in there. You also need to come to your build file. So it'll be whatever your project name is, it'll be in your project folder, the root folder if you've got other folders, but and it's the build.css. So in there, we just want to add UMG. It's a, the module for UMG. Otherwise you're going to get build errors when you go to build later. So about that, that should be all that business taken care of. So now we'll have our mouse position there. So that's the mouse position on the viewport. And we need to scale that by the uh, size of the viewport and the scale of the viewport. So we're going to get the viewport size as well. And then we're going to scale the mouse position by the scale of the viewport. That's how I interpret that set of code. And then what we need to do is normalize our mouse position values, our X and Y, because it's a vector 2D, it holds two floats, X and Y, and we're just gonna multiply, uh, divide them by themselves to get a, a number from zero to one. And that, that zero to one number is gonna be zero being the left, one being the right, and zero being the top, and one being the bottom on the X and the Y. So now that we've got our mouse position, we need to calculate whether we're right or left and up or down. In this case, I'm going to call it forwards and backwards because we're that's how we're going to be moving our pawn forwards or backwards, left or right, based on our mouse position. So to calculate if we're right or left, we're going to get our mouse position. This will be calculating uh, right. It, if it's if it's if it's one, it's fully right, and we're just we're bringing back. Um, by 0.2 here, 0.02. It, you can decrease this number to make it a, a wider gap on the side of the screen if you want it to be uh, start scrolling when the mouse is a bit further away from the edge of the screen. And um, I've got this less than one. So if you're using a windowed game, say, say you've got two multiplayer windows open trying to test the same game. If the mouse goes outside the, the window, it just scrolls like crazy and your game scrolls everywhere. If you have it less than one, it limits that. It still does some funny stuff sometimes, but at least you'll come back to your window and it won't be on the other side of the map. And then we need to check, well, if we're, if we're not right, are we left? And that's basically doing the same, except we're checking that, you know, we're, we're greater than zero, so we're not off the edge of the screen left, and we're in that 0.02. And then for the forward and back, we're basically going to do the same. Going to check if we're on the, on the bottom, that is, so that'll be going backwards. Doesn't really matter what order you put these in. That'll be if we're going forwards. Now, now that we know where where our mouse pointer is on the edge of the screen, we just need to tell it what we want to do when we get to those edge of the screen positions. So we've already got that functionality set up in our player pawn. So when we're on the right side of the screen, what do we want to do? We want to go right. And if you go look at the the right that we set up, it's not going to do anything if we're not pressing a key or providing an input to right. And then it's going to move our target position to the right by whatever axis value is passed in. And in this case, we're gonna pass in one. So it's like a key press on that tick. So if you were holding down, say, say uh, D to go right, it would be passing in a, a value of one to right. Now to do, to go left, we're simply gonna go negative right. So we're passing in a negative one, just like we do for when we press A, we pass in a negative one to right. Now this one here, I think I said this was, yeah, so that's down, so that's backwards. So that's a negative forward and forward. 
and that should be aid scrolling good to go if we load the editor I've added a terrain to this because I'm going to add terrain mapping in a second but you can see we're scrolling around yep, it's all working but in the edge scrolls working as well left down and right and we can go diagonal as well so you can see like when I come over a hill it's not really changing if that hill was say it was higher the hills higher than our zoom level we're going to cut into the floor like that so what we want to do is we want the camera pawn to actually follow like map the terrain as we go so let's let's do that by the way those those errors just in the in the editor before were just from the me left clicking the mouse and let's try to move the the pawn for the game it doesn't exist um okay so we want to set up terrain mapping so let's get a terrain position so again, just a protected function because we're just going to use it internally here. Uh, void get terrain position. Pos, pos, position. And uh, we're going to pass in a position that we want to adjust to a uh, terrain position. But we're also, we're going to return a position that is the terrain. So we're going to pass by reference. So let's call it terrain position. And this could be const. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a line trace from our current target location down to the terrain. So we're going to need uh, a, few, a few things for our, for our line trace here. So we're going to have a, we're going to need a hit result for when we hit the terrain. Uh, we're going to need some collision params and we're going to need a, a start and an end trace position. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the position that we pass in and we're going to modify that to a start and end position. So we're basically just going to add a bunch up and a bunch down and hopefully that connects with the terrain. You can make this number a lot larger if you want. It's not going to really affect much like performance or anything like that. It, it only needs to be as big as your biggest step in your terrain. So if you have a cliff that's, you know, a thousand meters, you probably want to increase this because if it's a step up or a step down that you need to capture. Now this is something we probably should do for our other... We, we need to get the, the world context because of that's where you'll find the line traces and uh, just check that we've got a valid line, uh, world context there otherwise you can get some crashes so we probably should have done that here where we're using get world we should really do a, a get world context like that so let's just change that quickly And then if, if for some reason we fail to get the world, it doesn't crash. <laughs> Alrighty, so now we've we've got the world and we need to do a line trace. So we pass in our params to the line trace single by channel. So we're passing in our hit, our origin position, our end position. We're tracing on the visibility channel. So the terrain that we're I've got in the game at the moment is set to block all so it'll block on the visibility channel and the collision params is just a ground that needs to be passed in and then what we're doing is the position that we're passing in we're overriding that with the hit hit position of the terrain so now we need to use our get terrain position and all we need to do is go to where we're calculating our location and update our position so this will pass in the old target location and update it to the new like so and this will work with the edge scrolling that we just set up because they they uh, pass through these two functions here and the only other thing we need to do is I believe in the last video where's the bounds at the bottom yeah we yeah here we go clamp the height so we don't need that anymore let's get rid of that and we'll restart the editor once the editor is restarted Give it a test run. And there we go. We're following the terrain. So now that's working, let's let's add some parameters to control how fast we can edge scroll so we can change it in the editor. So let's just copy our move speed. So we'll just duplicate it. And we'll go and we'll change this to edge 
scroll speed. Remembering that this is on tick, so we, we want it pretty something pretty low. Let's let's go by three scroll. And it scrolls speed. See how that looks. Better. Please don't forget to like if you found this tutorial helpful and subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials. You can join me on Discord or sign up to my Patreon where you can get access to all my tutorials early and the project files, as well as gain access to behind the scenes on my current game development. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching, see you next time.